Hi, in this video, we will quickly review the several type of reversible inhibition, how the kinetic data look like under, under these conditions. So let's begin. First, we'll talk about the competitive inhibition. In competitive inhibition, the substrate and the inhibitor compete for the enzyme's active site. And the substrate and the inhibitor has a striking similarity such that both can fit into the active site of the enzyme and thereby they can uh, compete for the enzyme's active site. Inhibitor binds to the enzyme instead of substrate, creating an enzyme inhibitor complex. And that's why the reaction does not proceed further and don't lead to a product formation. Second type of inhibition is uncompetitive inhibition, where the inhibitor binds to the enzyme substrate complex and forms an enzyme substrate inhibitor. And as a result of that, the substrate is not converted into the product. A third type is a mixed inhibition, where the inhibitor is able to bind to the enzyme and also it is able to bind to the enzyme substrate complex. So it is kind of a hybrid type of competitive and uncompetitive inhibition. That's why it is known as mixed inhibition. Now let's look at how the michaelis menten equation looks like under all these circumstances. So first talk about the competitive inhibition where the michaelis menten equation is given by this where V0 is Vmax into substrate concentration divided by alpha Km into S. So already you can understand that instead of Km, now this Km apparent is alpha Km. So Km has kind of increased for any positive value of alpha, Km would be increased, right? And when there is no inhibition, Km would be 1. So here is how the curve would look like. The curve would slightly shift rightwards, shifting the Km values, as you can see here. But the Vmax is unchanged from this graph we can understand. Let's talk about the uncompetitive inhibition. In this situation, the equation looks like somewhat this. V0 equal to Vmax into substrate concentration, Km plus alpha dash S. Now, this alpha dash is another red constant. Here, the curve looks like this. And from the curve, what you can tell, both Km and Vmax has decreased. So you can understand Km and Vmax has decreased in case of uncompetitive inhibition. We can really appreciate why Vmax has decreased and why Vmax has decreased to a degree of uh, Vmax by alpha dash. But what, why Km is decreased? Decrease in Km means increase in affinity of the enzyme towards the substrate. But how in this kind of inhibition that happens? In order to understand that, watch my video on uncompetitive inhibition where I have derived this uncompetitive inhibition equation. And by there I have explained how the Km decrease is fitting into this whole derivation. And link is given at the end of this video. Let's talk about mixed inhibition. Here, there are two factors. You can see that instead of Km, there is alpha Km, and instead of only substrate concentration, there is alpha dash substrate concentration, because there are two components, right? One for competitive and one for uncompetitive. And here is how the curve should look like. Now, in this particular situation, the Vmax decreased definitely. But most of the cases, it has been seen there could be an increase in Km or there could be a decrease in Km. Now, as this is a hybrid of uncompetitive and competitive, both kind of change in Km is possible, right? But in this particular graph, what we have shown is Km has increased. And this particular situation, the mixed inhibition is resembling more towards the competitive inhibition. But here, note the difference. In competitive inhibition, the Vmax does not decrease, whereas in kind of mixed inhibition, the Vmax decreases. Now let's try to look at the line weaver work plot in order to understand the kinetic data in a better manner. So here is how for competitive inhibition line weaver work plot looks like. And you can see the equation here given in orange. Here we can see the slope is alpha Km by Vmax, whereas without any kind of inhibition, the slope is Km by Vmax. Clearly, you can see 
the slope has increased because it is multiplied by a factor alpha for any positive values of alpha which is greater than 1 the slope would be bigger than the without inhibitor right and that's why we can understand this red line is much more steeper than this blue line that makes a sense right but you can see both the lines intercept the y axis at the same point that means our v max is unchanged but you can see the red one has shifted rightwards in the negative x axis so 1 by alpha km has been changed now since alpha k since km has increased 1 by alpha km has decreased in this negative x axis now for uncompetitive inhibition the michaelis menten equation in a line weaver berg format looks like parallel lines where the red line is much more steeper remember here both vmax and km has decreased right so definitely if vmax and km has decreased then 1 by vmax and 1 by km would be increased right and that's why you can see the line is much more steeper and the line intercepts the negative x axis way left side then we come to mixed inhibition in the mixed inhibition we can see the vmax has decreased that means there is a change in slope here as well the alpha km by vmax is the new slope so the line become more steeper and the line are the, these lines are meeting at a point which is away from the y axis now one important thing in this situation is depending upon the value of alpha dash or alpha there could be a change in the km depending upon the values of alpha and alpha dash the km could increase or decrease the apparent km could increase and decrease so in case of mixed inhibition in short vmax has decreased for sure but the came the apparent came could also increase or decrease so that was pretty much the overview of the kinetic data and how the equations and the graphs look like under all these kind of reversible equa reversible inhibitions but if you need detailed information about all these inhibition types do watch my enzymology playlist where i have explained all of these inhibition types and their derivation step by step so i hope you enjoyed this short video and it was informative if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to lock, like share and subscribe thank you